This video, we're going to talk about Chapter 4, Lesson 2. Once again, we're talking about ratios and rates, and we're going to talk about unit measurements. We're going to talk about comparing different things, two different items, or an item to a group of items. When we talk about um, the ratios in our last lesson, we talked about how we can write it in three different ways. We can use the word to, we can use it in a fraction form, or we can use a colon. All three are then said, in this situation, we have five to three, so we would say five to three, five to three, five to three. So we know we're comparing different things. Now, if I go down here, we're just gonna practice writing our ratios, which we learned about in the last lesson. So it says to write each ratio using words as a fraction and with a colon. Owls to hawks. Well, I don't know anything about owls to hawks, so I have to go back to reading what we're talking about. A bird rescue group is carrying for three eagles, two hawks, and five owls in the rescue center. So this says owls to hawk. How many owls do I have? I have five owls. And how many hawks do I have? I have two hawks. Have to put them in the order in which they're listed. Notice that in my story problem, well, hawks comes before owls. Well, that's one of those things Well, they're going to try to trick you every once in a while to make sure that you're truly paying attention. When this says owls to hawks, that's how they want you to write it. So my owls is going to have to be listed first. So I'd have owls to hawks, five to two. I'd write it in the fraction form, first number going on top, so it would be five to two. And then with my colon, it would be the same thing. It would be five to two. So it's just one part to the other part in comparison of one another. Well, if I go back to the same information, then it says we're gonna compare for B, eagles to total birds in the rescue center. So if I look at how many eagles we have, once again, we have three eagles, and my total birds is three plus two plus five, that gives me 10. So then I would write my ratios of eagles three to total birds 10, so I'd have three to 10, three to 10, and three to 10. And the last one then it says total birds. So once again, that's that 10 because we added them all together in the rescue center to the hawks. So in our hawks, we have two hawks, so I would have my 10 to two, because it's my total birds to how many hawks I have, 10 to two and 10 to two. So then the next part asks you just to think about what that tells you then. Well, the ratio of owls to total number of birds is five to 10. Explain what this ratio means. And once again, what we're being told is, whatever I'm comparing, this is how many of this part compared to this part. In this situation, then I know that for every set of 10 birds that I have, there are five owls. If there's only 10 birds, I have five owls. But if there'd be 20 birds, then I would have 10 owls. That's what a ratio tells me. So a ratio is, is just comparing the two different items. But what about rates? Well, the only difference with rates is rates are now gonna have labels. Most of the time in the question, they're gonna tell you how to set it up. Now, we'll see that we can set them up just like a ratio. I can use the word, I can use the colon, or I can use the fraction. But I'm going to tell you mathematically, the easiest way to write a rate is to have it as a fraction. So when I go through this the definitions in which they give me, it says a ratio, it compares two quantities, two numbers, that are different units. And a different unit, well, all that means is, is that they have different labels. That's all it means. We've talked before that I can't change gallons into miles. That doesn't work that way. So when I figure out what my gas mileage is, then I put over miles per gallon because I can't change them into one another. They have different units or different labels. A unit rate talks about how I have the same idea as a rate, two numbers with two different units, but I'm going to reduce it down to where my denominator, my bottom number, is a one. So when we're talking about rates, let's look at the idea that we talked about in the last lesson. Teachers and students. We'll talk about three fantastic teachers 
But if we talk about ratio, then once again, my ratio is going to be, well, these three teachers, and each of us have 23 students, and so 23 times three is 69. So in sixth grade, our ratio is three to 69. Can write it with the word, three to 69. Write it as a fraction, three to 69. Our ratio is just comparing those two different things that we're talking about. So when I look at what that tells me then, as a rate, then I want to put my larger number on top. It tells me that there are 69 students per or for every three teachers. Once again, the easiest way that is going to be to use a rate in a math problem is to write it as a fraction. We're going to be doing a lot of these. And they're not difficult at all. There's no difficult math that we're going to do in chapter four. It's just thinking about, understanding what we're talking about, and then putting it in. If we set it up as a fraction, it becomes so much easier if we set it up at the beginning the way we want. So we're just talking about a rate of 69 students per three teachers. Now, wait a minute. Stop and think about what we talked about with those two definitions. There was another one, wasn't there? There was also a unit rate. Well, unit rate just means that if I have these 69 students per three teachers, I want to reduce that. I want to change it and figure out well, what, what it is for one teacher. That's all a unit rate is. So when I reduce each of those, I could reduce by three. It evenly works in sixth grade because we have three classrooms, three teachers, and 69 students. But when I reduce by three, then I can see, well, how many students are actually in the cl each classroom? So we would go down when we reduce and we'd end up with 23 students for every one teacher. We would just say, well, there's 23 students per teacher. That would be my unit rate, because I'm left with just one that I'm comparing. We talk about unit rates quite often in our lives. When you're driving down the highway, we know that we can have a speed limit of 55 miles. 55 miles what? Because 55 miles tells me a distance. It tells me 55 miles per hour. And when we say that, it's just 55 miles per hour. What that is, is we're saying what our unit rate is when we say those words. We're saying that I can go at a distance of 55 miles for every one hour. We see it at the gas stations. We have this one that has four different gas prices, but we know that when we go to the gas station, I'm not gonna get a tank of gas for 2.239 gallons. Tangent. Now, I mentioned this already in my class a couple weeks ago when we talked about rounding. We see this mill up here all the time. We don't have a coin that's a mill. The smallest coin we have is a penny. So all they're trying to do is trick your brain and tell you, well, you, you get this for a little cheaper than maybe that someone just has a post for 224 per gallon. Well, that's not true. Because when we round, that nine tells me to round up, that three becomes a four, we're actually spending 224 per gallon. But when I talk about that, I know I'm not going to get my whole entire car filled up for $2.24. I'm going to go in and if I need five gallons, I know that for each of those five gallons, I'm going to spend $2.24. So our unit rate is $2.24 per gallon. We say that as $2.24 per gallon. We don't think about it, but we're actually using a unit rate. How about Hardee's? you notice Hardee's has this deal going on right now where you can get a whole meal for five dollars. Well, if I talk about a unit rate, then I'm talking about five dollars per meal. One meal would be five dollars. If you have three people in your family and you each get a meal, then you would be spending a total of fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for three meals, that would be my ratio. My rate or that would be my rate, and then when I reduce it, then I know I'm only spending $5 per meal. So when we talk about these definitions, the definitions are not designed to be difficult. The rates are, well, I use my totals that are there. I, I know that they have different units and they can't be reduced into one another. I'm going to use my labels. I'm good with that. My unit rate just means I'm going to start with or reduce down to where I only have one item. Let's look at what this is telling us. We have this chart then. It talks about veggie burgers, gross, 
and they are four dollars a piece and we want to figure out what these different values are think about the last assignment the last assignment had something very similar to this and if you can remember how we did this then you're good to go now please keep up and take your notes in your book because this is what you're going to look back on as you do your homework so we looked at well if i know that i have a unit rate because my bottom number is a one and it's four dollars for every one that i buy and then i want to figure out how much two costs well that's when we talked about well i have to multiply each of those by two and that's what it's done so then when i look at the next one well i'm going to three and this one up here shows me that i'm multiplying by a three so i have to multiply the bottom by what a three and then my next one, I'm going to buy another one. So there's four. And if I multiply my bottom by four, then I have to multiply my top by four. So then I'm going to go one more, and there's nothing there. Well, one more over just means I'm now going to be multiplying by fives. So let's fill this in. If I know that I'm spending or going to buy two of them, then I'm only going to spend eight. Because one times two is two. 4 times 2 is 8. And then I do the same thing with my 3's. So 1 times 3 is 3. And 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. Then I go to my 4's. 1 times 4 is 4. And therefore 4 times 4 is 16. And then on my last one, I'm going to take my 1, and I'm now going to buy 5, so I multiply 1 times 5, which is my 5, and 4 times 5, which tells me it's 20. So what does the bottom information ask me? Well, if I have my chart filled out, then I can answer all sorts of questions. Well, the table shows that 5 veggie burgers costs $20. So the rate that gives the cost for five veggie burgers is 20 to five because it asks for a rate so I have twenty dollars for every five burgers or I could write it as 20 to five or I could write it as 20 to five those are my rates well if it says well what is the unit rate it takes us all the way back to the very beginning, where one is my denominator, <coughs> I'm only buying one veggie burger. When I look at the next one, it says the rate that gives the cost of three veggie burgers then. So the rate, once again, would be, from the chart, my $12 per three veggie burgers. You can write it in with the word two or uh, with the colon, but it can be shown as the fraction as well. The rate that gives the cost of the four veggie burgers, then that's 16 to four, which we got from the chart above. Well, explain why the ratio of $4 for one burger is a unit rate. So what is required to have a unit rate? Well, I know it's a unit rate because it tells us that for every one item, that's my denominator, what we're spending, the cost is up above. It's a unit rate because the one is in the denominator. I know what I'm spending for my one item. So then I'm going to think about what that chart is showing me. Explain the pattern. And there are many patterns that we can see in our ratio rate charts. When I look at it, then I can see that for every even increase that I have by one item, then I'm increasing by $4 in the, in the other column. So there's a constant pattern. One, two, three, four, five. And then I go by my fours. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. There's a constant pattern. And it would stay steady no matter how many that I bought. So when we talk about ratio and rates, once again, ratio is just comparing two different numbers. And when I write them, I can write them in one of these three different ways. When I talk about rates then, I'm comparing two items also but they have labels, and labels that are not alike. Here I have 300 miles per five hours for my journey. My rate, unit rate then 
is when I'm going to reduce those values to where I have one as my denominator. So if I went on a journey that, took, that was 300 miles away, it took me five hours to get there, let's say to my parents down in Tennessee, then I could say, well, I went an average of 60 miles per hour. Per hour just means one hour. That would be my unit rate. So I think you got it, right? We're good to go. Well then let's take our notes, write down our problems, work through it. Should be a very simple assignment and you should have extra time to work on your Moby Max. So we have a write the ratio of the number of red bars to blue, st blue stars. So my red bars, I have one, two, three. That's gonna be my first number. How do I know it's my first number? Because it says red bars, two blue stars. So my bottom number, columns of two, four, six, eight. So my ratio is just simply three to eight. Write the ratio in two different ways. So if I write my ratio in two different ways and they give me one, then I need to show it in the other two ways that are left. This uses the word two, so I'm going to use the colon, eight to 16, and I'm gonna use the fraction, eight to 16. This one sets it up as a fraction of four to 24, so I'm going to then write with the word four to 24, and then I'd also write with the colon, four to 24. This one therefore has the colon of one to three, so I'm gonna use the word one to three, and then I'm going to use the fraction one to three. You go ahead and do number five. Pretty easy, right? I see that they use the word two, so I'm just going to use the colon seven to nine, and then I would use the fraction seven to nine. Honestly, I never seem to have any students that struggle with this idea on how to write them. What I generally see, if I have anyone miss any of this section of their assignments, it's because they don't read that they have to write it in two different ways and they only give me one other example. Well, that's automatically four points if I was grading them. So just make sure that you read the directions and you follow what they tell you to do. This one, number six, says Marilyn saves $15 per week. Complete the table to find the rate that gives the amount saved in four weeks. Write the rate in three different ways. So Marilyn saves $15 per week. What is that? Well, that's our unit rate. So if I know it's $15 per week, that's $15 for every one week. That's my unit rate that I will use and go back and forth to figure out my calcul calculations. So then they show us an even chart. And they show us that for every one week I have $15. For every two weeks I have 30 because one times two is two. 15 times two is 30. Then they say for three weeks I have 45. Well one times three is indeed three and 15 times three is indeed 45. And then just to check to make sure that we're on the same path, the right path, if I took one times five, I would get 15. And in my handy dandy calculator, if I quickly typed in 15 times five, then I do get 75. So the one that's missing is my four weeks. If one times four is four, then 15 times four is $60. So let's look, work through two more problems that are story problems. So here we have so, something about soccer and clarinets and how do I know? Because I've got some graphic resources down here that tell me what my story problem is about. Hopefully they're related to it. So Jim spends four hours per week playing soccer and three hours each week practicing her clarinet. Write the ratio of hours spent practicing clarinet to hours spent playing soccer three different ways. So I have three different answers, right? Do I need labels? I don't need a label. The reason I don't need a label is because I'm asked to write the ratio. 
of the hours, and in what order am I going to write them? Clarinet to soccer. So I'm going to take those hours, write them in three different ways in a ratio form. My hours of playing soccer, oh, they got tricky on us, didn't they? So they listed how they want me to write my ratio, clarinets to soccer. Notice how they put the numbers in the story problem. We spend four hours each playing soccer. And we spend how many? Three hours each practicing my clarinet. So they wrote the numbers backwards and then asked for the information in a different way. Make sure you're reading. So if I have my ratios, then I could have then I could have clarinets to soccer. I'd have three to four, three to four, and three to four. Looking at one more story problem and how we would work through it. This one is talking about some kind of game system. Well, it says Randall bought two game controllers at Electronics Plus for $36. Okay, so there's our two game controllers. What is the unit rate for the controller at Electronics Plus? Well, if I know that I have two of them and I spent $36. Well, we've done all of these where we had the unit rate given to me. So what am I going to do to get my unit rate? Well, if, if I remember, my unit rate has to have a denominator of 1. Well, we've talked about making equivalent fractions and how to change fractions. Well, what would I do to my 2 to get my 1? I just reduce by 2. And 2 goes into 2 once, so therefore, 2 goes into 36 18 times. So my unit rate for my controllers would be 18 to 1. Truly a pretty simple concept to understand comparing. Now that goes back once again to chapter 4, lesson 1. Should be pretty easy to do. My rates Oh, that, we talk about rates all the time in our lives, even though sometimes we don't realize it. We, we've heard mom and dad talking about miles per hour and the speed limit and how much gas is going to cost and those type of things and comparing the, those type of things. So when we talk about rates, we're comparing two things that are not the same item. They don't have the same label. And I figure out what their totals are. Or if I talk about unit rates, then I just reduce it down to per hour. In school, you have six subjects per school day. One school day. We go through six different subjects. Pretty easy to understand if we follow along and make sure we pay attention. As you're doing your work, if you do have any questions, please come and ask while I'm working with our students in the back. Or those of you who do get it and you finish early, you may feel free to help someone else in the class as long as you're truly helping them and, and giving them some points.